Recently, I saw some uh, video tutorials on creating a double exposure effect in Photoshop. So I wanted to see if I could replicate that look in Affinity Photo. So here you can see I've got uh, a background image of some mountains. Above that, I have an image of uh, a model. Um, and when you select the image that's going to act as kind of the mask for your, uh, your background image, you want to make sure that it's on a nice stark background. Now this one isn't perfect, but um, I'm going to go ahead and use the magic wand tool, the uh, flood select tool, to go ahead and pick the background. That's too much. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to the select menu. I'm going to invert that selection. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust this just a bit. So I'm going to go to the um, quick mask mode. I'm going to grab a paintbrush. And I'm going to um, get rid of some of that mask. Whoops, wrong color. Switch that to white. There we go. And to um, adjust the size of the brush on the fly, I'm just using the left and right bracket keys on the right side of my keyboard. That was too much. I'm going to zoom in on that with Command Plus and the space bar just to move over. That's kind of a soft brush, so I'm going to go ahead and switch brushes to something with a harder edge. Again, this isn't a perfect science, but um, you just want to get something that's passable. Okay, I'm going to flip colors, clean up some of the, um, the specs that are outside. Command zero to fill uh, fill screen, and I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool. That selection looks pretty good. So clicking on the layer is going to flip us out of quick mask mode. I'm going to create a new layer, so add a pixel layer, grab my paint bucket, I'm going to fill that with black, and I can see a couple of areas that need some cleanup, so um, again, I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool, I'm going to flip it back to black, and on that layer, I'm going to go ahead and actually Command D to deselect, I'm going to paint out anything that doesn't look right. I just want a nice solid uh, object that I can use as a mask. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now again, just to recap, we've got three objects. I've got a, um, a layer with just kind of a black silhouette on it. I've got my uh, photo of the model and then I've got my background image so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that uh, silhouette I'm gonna move that down to just above my background and 
with the topmost silhouette, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to mask to below. With my second silhouette, I'm going to do, actually, before I do that, I'm going to duplicate my um, background image. But then uh, once I do that, I'm going to, again, mask to below. So now when I turn off my background image, you can see that the uh, model is cut out. When I turn that layer off, you can see I've got uh, the mountain range cut out. So let's go ahead and go back to the model, work with that for a little bit. And I'm going to adjust this to multiply. And I'm going to click on the mask. Now, because of the way that we created this mask, it was uh, a black object on a transparent layer. Um, it doesn't work quite the way you would expect where you are painting on the mask with black and white. Um, so I'm selecting the mask. I'm grabbing the eraser tool. I'm just going to erase everything but the most pertinent features of her face. And you can see that sky is showing through. At least the original colors of the sky, I should say. Just going to erase all of this. Essentially, um, the last thing we're going to work with on this layer or that we're going to really leave is the, uh, the features of her face. Now this would probably go a little quicker if you were using a, a Wacom or something rather than a mouse. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and turn back on the lowest layer. And you can see that kind of obscures everything, obviously. So um, the other thing I'm going to do is add an effect on this layer. I'm going to add a Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to turn on that layer. I'm going to blur that. You can start to see some of the details of the, uh, the unsharpened portion of the image. I'm going to add one more layer. I'm going to move that below the mountain. I'm going to fill that with white. So you can see I've got my white color chip on the right. I'm going to fill that in. Not a lot to see just yet, but I'm going to select my mountain layer. I'm going to adjust that down. Let's go 50%. That looks good. Um, with the masked mountain layer, I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to add an outer glow. I'm going to pick a color from the image, so I'm going to move this over. I think I'm going to grab something from the blue sky. So I'm going to click on my color chip, grab my eyedropper, select the blue and click on it. And I want to see where it's contrasty, so rather than using the uh, upper right portion of that image, I'm going to judge it on the lower left corner, bring the radius up. And I think I want to bring that down a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the opacity down. Let's do 60%. And I'm going to adjust the, um, the layer from normal to, let's do screen, no, let's not, let's do multiply. I think we'll adjust that face. Soft light looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and select that.
And there you go. I just want to say thank you for stopping by my channel. If this video was at all helpful to you, it'd mean a lot to me if you liked or subscribed. Share this video if you know someone that could use the information. As always, if you have questions, suggestions for tutorials, or if there is some other creative software that you think I should start making tutorials for, leave a comment below.